standby for manual transmission in three, two, one. O oh, seven commanders, nuggets, and empty triangles. Manus Dexter here, and this is going to be my no frills, right to the point review of Elite Dangerous Odyssey after update eleven. So just to put this in context, I have not played Odyssey at all since about Update 5. So let's start with what's good. Over the last 3 or 4 days, I've played about 12 hours or so doing a variety of activities. Most of that time was spent in VR with graphics set to Ultra. And just to be clear, that's not VR Ultra, I mean Ultra. Gathering information.
Life form readings collected. On my i7-3070 rig, the game looks and plays great in just about every location. Using the vanity cam, I was able to experience carrier interiors in full VR. This was actually really good, and I wish FDev would give us the same on-foot VR support that we have in vehicles. A first-person 3D view with head tracking. This could be easily done, and I think it would satisfy most of Elite's VR community. As for the fleet carrier interiors themselves, they look good, and despite the fact that they don't really bring any new gameplay, I like them a lot. There's just something very satisfying about walking from my ship to my office on the command deck, and then looking out the window at the first ringed Earth-like planet I ever discovered. I like it so much that I plan to stay here and make this my permanent base for mining and exploration. If you're ever passing by on your way to Colonia or the core, feel free to stop by Stucky's Galactic in Elatist DP-Z D50 for the galaxy's finest pecan log cartridges and the cleanest restrooms in the universe. We got repair, rearm, and refuel facilities along with Universal Cartographics and Vista Genomics. And if I feel like doing any mining, there might even be a bit of tritium for sale. So yeah, I like the addition of interiors and I like the much better frame rates and overall performance. These things are good enough to convince me not to uninstall Odyssey again. Unfortunately, that's really all the good I have to say about the expansion. Ground missions are still not much fun in my opinion, and what makes it so much worse is that if you do something to aggro the overzealous security guards, you'll usually find yourself waking up in a detention cell somewhere, but the real punishment will be the forced 5 to 10 minutes of complete and utter inactivity you'll have to endure as you ride back to your ship in an Apex shuttle. In an effort to cope without resorting to mass murder, because that's usually counterproductive in the long run, I loaded up Goat Simulator Waste of Space. The plan was to record a few minutes and pretend to play during my shuttle ride. However, after 15 minutes of pure joy, I just shut down Odyssey and played Waste of Space for another two hours. It was great. So yeah, one star for Odyssey and 10 out of five stars for Waste of Space. You know what? I'll give Odyssey an extra star for reintroducing me to Goat Simulator. So two out of five stars for Odyssey. Don't buy until you can find it on a Steam sale for under $10. In the meantime, the base game remains the gold standard for space combat in VR, and I'll be concentrating on that while doing a bit of exploration and mining with my new fleet carrier. Until next time...
now be released from manual control. Mr. Dextra thanks you for your cooperation.